In this final movie about the lathe, we're going to show how to cut a part off, and this operation is known as parting on the lathe. And there's a few things that we have to be aware of when parting a, on, an object or part on the lathe. First, how to install the parting tool. Then, how to calculate or set the length to cut the part off at. The actual operation of performing the cut ways to deburr or take off the sharp edges from a part, and how to catch that part once it is cut off. And finally, if necessary, facing the part to length if the part was cut off long. Let's first talk about how to install the parting tool. Now that we have our part machined the way we'd like it, uh, Don's taking off the, the cutting tool we use for the facing and uh, turning operation. He's putting in a tool that's known as uh, a parting tool. Is that correct, Don? Yes. Or a grooving tool. A gro or grooving. grooving tool? Okay. Uh, if it's called the grooving tool, then I guess it is groovy? Yeah. Yes, man. It's really groovy. All right. Okay. So, Don, what angle does this need to attack the part at? Uh, 90 degrees. Now, how did you do that? You, you, you don't have it tightened up. You put it up against the part, and you just made sure it was flat? I'm just going to make sure that this is square to the part. That is correct. Squared up to the part. Okay. So now that he's got it squared... Tightening it up, cranking it. Remember, world's strongest man. That's right. Don't forget that. All right, now he's got to get the tool. I want to make sure it's tight. Make sure it's tight. The tool's tight, it's square. He now. What about the height of this tool? Does that matter? He wants to be on center. Okay, he wants to be on center again. Is that just an eyeball center? We're going to put the the ruler in again. You guys done for tonight? All right. Let's take a look at what Don did in installing the parting tool. First off, he inserted that tool into the tool holder and he tightened it up with uh, the three set screws on the top. He then set the cutting angle to 90 degrees. He uh, did this by loosening up the, the tool post up on the top using a large uh, wrench and then he put the tool uh, the parting tool r right up against the end of the part to make sure that it was square to the part or making a 90 degree angle with respect to the axis of rotation and then finally he had to set the height of the ruler so that it was at the center of the part and remember he did that by moving the cutting edge up to the side of the part and then putting the six inch steel rule and holding the steel rule against the part with the tip of the parting tool. If you're at the center then your six inch ruler should be perfectly vertical. Next let's look at how to calculate the right length to cut off with. All right, so now Don has got to move this. We wanted one and a half inches. So, All right. so you, we want one and a half inches long. Right, I got one and a half inches long. I want to, or more than one and a half. I'll, let's make it uh, inch and three quarters just so I got a step. Okay, right. so we're going to do uh, inch and three quarters. Right, so I, what I did there is I touched the tool to the end of my part. I'm going to zero it. And then I'm going to measure the thickness of my grooving tool. And I'm measuring about 110 thousandths. And I'm so 110 thousand, point one one zero, 110 thousandths. And I'm going to add that to my inch and three quarters. So if I go down an inch and three quarters plus another 110, I want to be 860. And that would cut me off right at right at the point that I want. 
Well, a lot of times you end up with a slight taper or don't clean up well or you're not going to get the desired finish you want. So I always recommend to give yourself a little bit more. You can give yourself anywhere between 25 to 30 thousandths. So we'll just take it right to 8 inches, 900. And that should make our part longer. All right, so we're cutting it off a little long. Now I'm looking at there. There is clearance. It's not going to cut into the collet, so that's good. All right. So we're moving in and we're cutting this off big. Okay. Hey, before you cut off a part, you're going to need to know where to cut it off at. In other words, how much length do you need to have there uh, when making the cut? So to do this operation, the first thing you need to do is to touch off the end of the part. So you carefully move the parting tool into the uh, flat end of the part until it just barely touches. Then you stop the spindle and then you're going to press the X0 button on the uh, DRO and that will zero the X direction. Next you want to measure the thickness of your parting tool. In this case Don measured it as 110 thousandths of an inch. In other words 0 0.110 inches. The minimum cutoff position relative to the end is going to be at x equals a negative because moving toward the spindle with your tool is going to read as a negative uh, direction on the DRO. So it's negative the desired length. So let's say you want your desired length to be 1.75 inches. And then you'd have to add to that the thickness of the, the parting tool. And Don's was 0 0.110. So if you add 1.75 to 0 0.110, you get 1.86. Now Don said that it's usually not a good idea to cut right to length with the parting tool because you don't get as nice a finish or it may not be perfectly square. So he recommended that in most cases you want to cut your part off long. And later on in this movie, we'll talk about how to then face the part down to the desired length. So that's uh, the idea of cutting off long. All right, next, let's look at actually performing the cut. All right, Don's slowing down the spindle speed. To what are you putting it down to, Don? 110. Now, where did that number come from? Just your experience? Yes. All right, so 110, he's putting it down to. Now, that's just a typical rule of thumb. Yes, you're going to want to uh, slow your spindle way down when you're going to cut, do cutoff. Okay. All right. Okay, now I'm thinking, Don, when this starts cutting off, eventually it's going <laughs> to it's gonna fall off and go flying. That's right. So what we'll use is we'll use a, uh, this roof. The nice thing about this part is it has a hole in it. So I could do one of two things. I could take a small... St a uh, piece of material, put it in a drill chuck and let it stay in here so it'll catch the part or I can just use this, uh, hold this and I can catch the part using this Allen key. Okay, but at no time are you catching it with your hand? No, by any means, I'm not. No hand, okay. So he, he's put the speed to 110, all those crazy, no, notice it's, it's cutting off slow, it's a slow cut. Uh, you're just going to do manually, Don, or you're going to... So Don's just doing manual cutting here. Uh, we're not using the power feed the, because the, the feed in is going to be related to 110 and we just don't want that. Notice that chips are flying. Once again, I, I wear, I've got protection over my glasses. Now let's review how the cut is actually performed. First thing is, Don set the spindle speed to 110 RPMs. He used that value simply from his personal experience using that machine uh, with the particular parting tool. But he did say in most cases, the cutoff speeds, the RPMs of the spindle are very low. So 110 would be recommended. He uh, uses the manual cross feed and doesn't use the power feed, just manually moves that in slowly and does the, the cut very slowly. And he applies the coolant very liberally uh, during the cut to reduce uh, friction and thus heat. Next, uh, Don's going to talk about deburring and then ultimately catching the part when it's fully cut off. 
that we can do now is we talked about burrs. We can deburr this part now. We started parting it off. I can take this file, the file usage, real quick, is I can take and I can hold this file. If I had a three jaw in here, I would not reach across like this. I'm always going to want to come up here like this, so do not get in the habit of reaching across your part. Come across here, you're going to hold both hands on your file. You're always going to make sure you have a file handle on your file. And then I can just, nice easy motion, and I can deburr my part. Now, Don just touched the part with his hand. He's a master tool maker. You should not be doing that yourself. Right. Um, now, don't think because this uh, lathe is turning at a relatively slow rate that it's any less dangerous. This p takes and pulls you in there. It'll do just as much damage. Right. All right so Don's continuing using the, the cutting coolant, which is an oil lubricant as well. Chips are flying. It just hit Don in the face. Uh, once again, safety glasses, really, really important. I know you, you, you hate me talking about uh, the safety glasses and the safety all the time, but remember, I'm not just a professor. I'm a father, too, and I, sometimes I feel like a father to many of you. Okay, Don, it, it's eventually going to fall off. He's putting a lot of that down in there. Um, okay, he's sticking this rod in there s just to support the material so that when it falls off, it, it won't go flying. You can, one of two things, if you're uncomfortable with this, like I said, put a rod, a small diameter pin in the collet, which I uh, drill chuck like I recommend maybe for you guys to get used to. Or with a smaller or slower RPM, you can take and put a rag down here and let the part just drop. All right. If you're going at high spindle speeds, the part won't just drop. It'll, it'll come flying off. All right, so there is the cutoff. Wow, we've cut that off. Let's do a recap of the deburring and catching the part. Remember, under no circumstances do you catch a part with your bare hands. Well, first, before it got uh, cut off, uh, Don brought a file over to do a process known as deburring. Uh, deburring is to take off sharp edges off the edge of the part. He said it's very uh, important that you never uh, uh, reach across the chuck, that uh, you should be careful how you're reaching into the part. Usually you should be um, on the uh, opposite side of the tool post uh, as the uh, as the spindle so you want to stay away from that uh, the rotating spindle and chuck he said you should only use a file that has a handle uh, on it you need to hold the file with two hands and then you would only lightly press the file against the edges Although Don did touch his part, that's a bad practice and you shouldn't do it. Do not touch your part or any spinning object on the lathe. That would include the spindle, the part, and obviously you wouldn't want to put your hand down into the feed screw either. So that's deburring, just uh, knocking off sharp edges on the, uh, the cut edges of the part. When the part process was nearing completion, in other words, the, uh, the cut was almost all the way through, you have to start thinking about how you're going to uh, catch that part. Don uh, said on this particular part there was a hole through it and he could support it uh, with a, a rod or in this case it was the, um, the Allen key, uh, long Allen key that he had. He also said that another technique would be to place a rag under the part so that when it dropped off it would um, the, its fall would be cushioned and it would be captured in the rag. In uh, no circumstances are you to catch the part with your hands because there's going to be some sharp edges coming off of the side where the parting tool is cutting and uh, you could find yourself bleeding after this process. Now once the part is cut off, and in this case cut off long, let's talk about 
how we're going to get the part faced to the proper length. Okay. All right. So one last thing, Don. We've cut that off. If we wanted to make this 1.75, we could put this back in and face off to the length. That is correct. I would have to take this back apart. I would have to go to get a smaller collet to fit this diameter, and then I can slide it in and up against the shoulder, and I can face this off, and I can be able to measure this. All right. So I think we've we've got you pretty good on, on basic facing, which is cutting off the end, turning, which is making the diameter smaller, and uh, cut off or parting, uh, which Don just did to cut your part off. All right. You'll be quizzed on all this, so pay attention. All right. Bye. In most cases, you're going to cut your part off long because the parting tool does not create a nice machined edge in some cases. So in those cases where the object is now too long after the cutoff, we have to first measure the total length of the part. So let's say that our intended length was 1.75 inches, and we cut the thing off to 2 inches. Okay, So that would mean we would have a quarter of an inch too much. So we're going to, you would compute the length to face off by simply taking the actual length presently and subtract from that your desired length. So in this case, that length to cut off would, let's say, be a quarter inch. You would then install the turned end, the finished end, of your part into the correct size collet. Obviously, if there was not a collet to fit, you'd have to use a three-jaw chuck. You would then use your regular cutting t tool, not, not the parting tool, but the one with the triangular edge. You'd have to set that up and get that ready for a facing operation. You'd then also have to set the proper speed of the spindle, and you're probably going to want to use the power feed like what was talked about before. But after the touch off, you want to hit the X0 button on your DRO, and that would make the current end of the part, and this is the jagged end that was cut, uh, that will now be zero. You would then face the part off, oh, taking you know small cuts each time, until you got to uh, a length of, or X position of minus uh, the length uh, to face off, which in this case would be a quarter of an inch. Um, now, to do very precise work, you would probably uh, not uh, face right to that length in, in one operation. You would stop the spindle, you would take your part out of the collet, you'd measure it again, you know, you would then calculate how much more to get off, you'd put it back in, you'd touch it off, you'd zero it, and then you'd take that length little by little by little until you got it right in within the tolerance. So that is uh, the idea of uh, facing the part. Uh, the facing operation creates a, a much more precise surface than a parting tool would. Let's see just how much you absorb by seeing if you can answer these questions and hand in your answers to your lab instructor. First off, what angle should the surface of the parting tool make as measured from the axis of rotation of the part. And how is this angle set or determined um, on the lathe? Two, what's the minimum length that a part must be cut off? Number three, state three things that must be done during the cut. And actually one of these things is done prior to the cut. Number four, describe the proper method for deburring a part on the lathe. And then lastly, if a part is cut off long, what must be done to face the part to the correct length? Thanks for coming and staying tuned to all these lathe movies. I've enjoyed making them, and I hope Don Howard has as well. So I will see you face-to-face -face someday. But for now, let's say goodbye.